is part two of our discussion about healthcare, using the Romanian system as a case study. So if you're interested, you might want to go back and listen to part one. In the previous episode, we talked about the general state of the healthcare in our country, how it is universal in theory, but how there are certain limitations to that universality and why. We mentioned attempts at privatizing healthcare in Romania, as well as how private service providers fit into the picture. This episode, we'll talk a bit about what it means to pick a medical profession as your career, corruption scandals, and somehow 90s Euro dance sensation Dr. Alban will also fit into the picture. Finally, Irina graciously offers her opinion on what could be done to improve our national healthcare system. As always, if you would like to support this show, don't forget to share your favorite episodes, follow or subscribe to us. Uh, thank you and uh, enjoy the episode. I would like uh, us to discuss uh, doctors in Romania more. I don't mean to harp on your age, dear, <laughs> but <laughs> okay. I feel like you could provide a sort of nice overview of what being uh, first a med school student, then a resident doctor, have a practice, as you mentioned, and then retrain in, uh, in another field looks like in an Eastern mm-hmm. European country such as ours. Okay, so first of all, I, uh, yes, I am 41 years old. I, I can only speak to the experience I had. I'm really, really hoping it's better now. Uh, fingers crossed for the people that are younger than mm-hmm. me. So I, I went uh, I went to the University of Târgu Mureș, the Medical University of Târgu Mureș in Romania. You go from high school if you want to be a doctor, you go to medical university that is six years. Mm-hmm. And um, we have many universities, but some of them are older and are more established and uh, they're, let's Let's say reputation is better and um, um, anyway in Romania the best universities again are the state funded ones the private universities in Romania are <laughs> shit uh, mostly because yeah mostly mostly because they don't want to lose their students so they take bribes and they do everything they can for the student to not leave the university you mean the private the sector isn't just intrinsically better at everything yes oh. that is what I mean I swear to God. you call me you Yes, um, I, I I went to one of the universities that uh, at the time, and I think still now, is considered one of the like top five in, in Romania. Mm. It wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we had we had uh, old books uh, written by old even older people <laughs> and um, as as I as I found out later it wasn't as bad as in other places you know like we had our own cadaver. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, like um, um, some of my colleagues from Yash, for example, told me they had parts, body parts. <laughs> we had like the whole, we, we, we had we had the whole the whole thing. <laughs> anyway, it's fun to be a medical student, especially mm, in the first the the first year and second year, because uh, for the practical exams, you you have you to like kill to someone have... to have the cadaver. No, but <laughs> but you at least have you at least have to to find somebody who was killed before. <laughs> or or died of natural causes but you, you know uh, you you need to be able to to study more than the number of hours that you are actually in school so um, most students uh, tend to put money together and uh, you know like three or five people buy their own uh, skeletons <laughs> Uh, they're by their own brain. You literally had skeletons in your closet. I had the skeleton under my bed and uh, my mom came to visit oh. and realized that uh, and, and she couldn't sleep for the three days she, she was there. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Uh, but you know some of the some of the um, adverts are really funny because in the, you know uh, you you see in the dorms you you see ads like I'm looking to buy an unused brain <laughs> <laughs> and what what they mean because how how you use it um, is uh, for 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 the exam you put needles through the mm-hmm. brain wh- where there are certain uh, parts of the brain because on the exam you get slices of brain. <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> well, you asked, dear, you asked. Oh, you got, I got the gross you, thought. You, I'm just, you know, relishing the idea of clipping uh, you out of context. <laughs> you, get, you get slices of brain with um, uh, needles in it that have a number on top. And uh, then you have to, on a piece of paper, write the numbers and say what they are corresponding mm-hmm. to. But some some of the components of the brain, some, some of them are so, so small that if you poke them a couple of times, then you don't see the, don't see it anymore. <laughs> so this is what we meant when we said we want an unused brain. So, okay, so uh, university, it was a lot of learning, uh, the- theoretical learning, but not extremely good in um, giving you practical abilities. Mm -hmm. Also, a lot of what you learned was kind of outdated. And then you become a resident. And uh, as a resident, you should actually perform medicine for real, only only that you are supervised. But uh, actually in Romania, as a resident, you sort of end up doing what you should have done as a student. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the people that that actually uh, have to supervise you, even though by their own will, they have uh, uh, entered into the system because uh, the, the, the state doesn't go and just make people be supervisors you you are a a, a teaching assistant or some other uh, sort of university employee and uh, then you you have to also do this you know Mm -hmm. to be a supervisor for 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 students for for residents but a lot of people actually don't want to do anything so they encourage the residents to just not show up for work Mm -hmm. and of course a lot of residents being still young people are like yeah that's great and um, you might end up finishing a residency and realizing you are completely unfit to work on your own i uh i i i have my um, resident three years of residency for family medicine. Mm-hmm. A family doctor in Romania is something that breaks the brain of other people if you explain to them, <laughs> because you are you 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 are a private practice that works exclusively for the state. I mean, a public private partnership. Yes, but you know it's it, it, it's not because uh, a, a a private state partnership in other countries means that you provide cer- certain services for the state, but you also so do whatever the fuck other things you want to as a business, but you cannot as a family doctor. Mm-hmm. You can only work for the mm-hmm. state. Okay, and they uh, they uh, can impose you the schedule. You 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 have um, uh, problems going on holidays because you are not allowed to just stop uh, giving the services. And they they made all these laws that you cannot just ask people, you know, for the next week, I will be on holiday and you can go see my colleague, ex colleague, mm-hmm. he works there. No, no, the state decided that there should always be somebody in your office. So you have to find somebody who comes into your office. And this is very hard because the other people that are actually working are already working in their offices. Yeah, and they're not allowed to leave their office without, yes. And yeah, and, 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 uh, and uh, of course, uh, if, if, you, if you work in a bigger city and you, you work in a place where maybe there are uh, two, three, five doctors working together, it's easy. But if you are in a village and you are the only doctor there, mm-hmm. you know, if, even the next hospital is a few hundred kilometers away, you can never leave. And we already know how doctors just fight for the privilege of uh, working in a village or in a small town, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So that's that's uh, that's that's shit. That aside, what I was trying to say is that as a family doctor, not only do you have to have medical knowledge, but you really, really need to know how to manage a private practice because mm-hmm. you end up with one. Luckily for me, after I ended my, my residency, I went to be a doctor in bumfuck nowhere, <laughs> uh, aka Russia Montana. Well, that bumfuck nowhere became pretty prominent on the national stage a few years later. No, 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 no. I, I, I was there when it was going down. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the midst, the epicenter. I was. Of... Yes, 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 yes. So so for, for the one, two, three viewers, 
viewers who are not from Romania and who are not familiar with Roșia Montana, it's basically, it used to be, does it still function as a gold mining uh, community? They they see themselves as a gold mining community, but the, the, the mines are closed. Yes. Okay. So what they tried to do was to sort of sell the mining rights to, I believe, an Australian company at some point. No, 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 uh, a, Can- a Canadian company. A Canadian, okay. Uh, and there was a huge uproar and uh, sort of the issue, I mean, it started off as let's speak out on behalf of the community in Roșia Montana, but obviously it uh, was taken uh, uh, up uh, for a broader sort of protest movement nationally. Yeah, but the, 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 the problem uh, was not the mining because the way you could have mined for gold, the old-fashioned way that like you go into the ground and you mine, mm-hmm. uh, that that couldn't be done anymore because there was no more gold on the surface that can yeah, be reached. Uh, yeah. So that was the problem. The problem was that the way to do the exploitation of the, of the area, you had to just take away a whole, uh, you know, hill. You just mm-hmm. had to cut it out yeah. uh, and, and, and move it on another area. So you, you destroyed this area and you also destroyed the next area because you have to put somewhere all the stuff you take away from here. Very environmentally friendly is what I'm hearing. <laughs> yes, and, all, and also you had to have another area where you would have the cyanide lake. Ooh. In order to get to the gold, you had to take this the stuff that was sort of... Impurities? In, uh, or... Yeah, intermingled. You had to, 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 mm-hmm. to, to take it through this cyanide solution uh, and you had to have like a cyanide lake that is pretty big. So basically that would have uh, sort of ruined the whole area, an extremely huge area. This wasn't a fight about uh, mining in general. Yeah. And and also, since I was there at the time, and uh, I talked with the actual, uh, you know, uh, directors from the mining company, their their plan was to have everything done in seven years. So they, they would have mm-hmm. done all the destruction, and the people there that actually wanted to have this in order to still have jobs would have had jobs for seven years. And um, the money they offered was pretty shit, the money they offered to the government, you know. <laughs> uh, so for seven years, I mean, you could just put in place some way of just re, you know, moving the people from there and have, have that be, be, because they would still be in the same situation that they are seven years later because there is no other way to make money there so if if you're looking Mm -hmm. for a long-term solution this wasn't it but uh, let let's move away from this so 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 i was uh, i was a doctor in bumfuck nowhere and um uh, why i say fortunately is uh, i went in a village where people were just happy to have a doctor and the two doctors before me one of them was an alcoholic <laughs> and and uh, and the other one uh, just most of the time wasn't there so i kept making fun and say and and, and and i kept saying that i'm the best doctor they ever had because i am sober and there so <laughs> <laughs> So this this actually gave me the time to learn a lot of things on the job. But um, let's just say that I should have been a lot better from the get-go. So this is what I'm saying, that the way you get trained in Romania is not the best. The practical training is not the best. Mm-hmm. But since we reached my time in Rosha Montana, maybe this is the time to tell you that uh, when I was there, uh, it was when our formally mentioned President Bosescu mm-hmm. wanted to sort of get rid of the state-funded health insurance and uh, go to a private system. So... Since the president was really into it, and uh, even though we are not a presidential republic, the Basescu had this sort of, I don't know, attitude and uh, power of character that he sort of had the bigger dick out of ev- everybody <laughs> at that time. And he was sort of in charge of most decisions, even if they were not in the purview of the president, you know. Mm -hmm. So 
since the uh, private insurers started feeling, you know, smelling blood, feeling like, ooh, 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 it's getting closer and closer. They were edging. They were edging they, so hard. They were, yes, so hard, so hard. Uh, so they started uh, sending um, representatives, you know, all over the country to the family doctors because everybody has to have a family doctor and Mm -hmm. um, the the family doctor has contact with you know everybody even if they are not it's a good gateway yes it's it's the best gateway and uh, even in bumfuck nowhere where no (laughs) other uh, i i had no generally a lot of doctors get visits from pharma representatives that they try to convince them to sell this or that uh you get invited to conferences to like if you are a doctor in like never heard of it romania you you have zero visits. Like nobody cares that you exist. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I was getting visits. And they were trying. Like it, 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 it was hard to get to where I was working. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, physically hard. Uh, mm-hmm. Up in the mountains. To, uh, yes, yes. Yes, and, and, and I started getting these these people uh, telling me uh, in no uncertain terms that, uh, look, this is going to happen, like the president is really on board and this is going to happen. We will give you this amount of money for each patient that you uh, convince, convert. convert to our insurance. And also I said that um, Dr. Alban will come into place. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Alban, for who is not uh, as old as me, uh, was actually a singer that had one uh, one famous song in the 90s. Come on, more uh, than one. Yeah, name it. Well, it it I'm, I'm guessing you're referring to It's My Life, right? Yes, and the other one? And then there was another one, which I don't remember the title of, but sounded the beats were really similar. So, yeah, so he had one song. <laughs> <laughs> So he had he had one song, and um, what what I found really funny is that uh, one of these insurance companies tried to bribe me with inviting me to this uh, party that they were having in a capital where Dr. Alban will be singing, and I was like, just I thought it was hilarious. I'm like, sure, I will I will totally. Totally, you know, se- sell my sell my integrity for for that. I mean, of course. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that was um, that was what was happening. But unfortunately for them, they didn't manage to to do that. But they spent a lot of money at the time because they were, you know, trying to somehow prime the <laughs> apply primer <laughs> for the doctors. They also have a, a, an attempt at uh, a push for privatization uh, early 2020, and then the pandemic hit, and then they had to sort mm-hmm. of like. Yeah. Yes, track back. So, uh... as you said, that I sort of um, reshaped my uh, professional trajectory. You have to to decide for yourself what it is that you want and w- what are the things that are really important for you. I was one of the people that worked in villages, so I I, I did this for for, mm-hmm. for for a fairly amount of like. For about five five years, five years and a half, uh, I worked in places <laughs> where people didn't go. But I knew that that was not what I want to do. I love that I did it. It was an awesome experience for somebody who had no experience. Mm-hmm. I yeah, bet. For, 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 for somebody mm-hmm. who had no experience, like you deal with everything. It, it totally makes you better <laughs> at everything. <laughs> Uh, and, and, you know, even more resilient, even of uh, abilities in life in general, not just medical abilities. So I am actually very thankful for that period of time in my life. But I knew that that is not uh, where happiness lies for me because I'm a big city girl. I was born in a big city and mm-hmm. I love big city life. I don't understand things like, don't you want a quiet place? Yes, when I die. <laughs> yeah, no, so I, 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 I am not bothered by um, crowds, uh, about uh, noise, uh, about all these things that come with living. The occasional explosion. Yeah, yeah, as it yes, happens. yes, yes, yes. So, like, I, I get the, I, I get the, 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 the pluses and the minuses of a big city, but I am a big city girl at heart. Um, so I realized that with the job 
that I had at that time, it was really hard to come in the big city. So I was struggling to think what I could do. So what I did was I went back to school and um, I did nutrition and dietetics that even if it is within the University of Medicine, I, I am a doctor because I, I was already a doctor, but people who go to, 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 this, uh, to this university, they, they just mm -hmm. are dietitians. I am, a, 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 again, a strange <laughs> uh, breed. I am a, a, a doctor who also did this. Uh, so I, I, I practice now in an oncological uh, clinic and I take care of the nutrition of uh, cancer patients. And this allowed me to actually have a great job opportunity, but I have this great job opportunity by actually giving up being what mm -hmm. people think of as a doctor. So I gave up... Your dignity. <laughs> Yeah, I gave up. Yeah, I gave up my dignity in, in, in the eyes of the people that I don't give a fuck about. Uh, and, 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 I, and I gained uh, self-control over my time a lot and my money and the place I live in and basically a lot of other things that are genuinely important to me. So now I want to delve into a slightly more delicate topic, uh, namely that of bribery. As uh, Romanian listeners are uh, no doubt aware, uh, unfortunately, bribery is on the table when dealing with certain institutions or when n requiring certain services. Uh, and when it comes to interactions with doctors, usually uh, people use euphemisms like uh, giving them a token of your appreciation or things like that. In Romanian, we say attenție, which literally means like you're buying their attention. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so the reason I, I would like us to talk about this, because when I was growing up, regardless of whether or not individual doctors were or not likely to accept bribes for patients on the patient's end, it was very much an um, uncontested truth that you would have to consider bribing your doctor in order to receive the, well, basically the services that you would have to receive normally. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed, at least from like an outsider's perspective, is that like in the last maybe 10, 15 years, uh, it has become sort of, there has been maybe, I don't know, a generational shift, but it seems like with uh, younger doctors, it's a sort of like a badge of honor to be like, no, I clearly do not accept the bribes. And uh, even when the patients insist, uh, I just, you know, Mm -hmm. refuse them. And and I I was wondering whether or not you have a take on what has happened maybe uh well, what what's behind the change. Well, first of all, I I honestly cannot have an objective opinion because uh, there is no way for me to I want your subjective opinion. Yeah, no, but <laughs> I mean I mean there is no way for me to know what is the percentage of doctors taking bribe and doctors not taking bribe currently in Romania. Mm -hmm. Like I, I I cannot know. What I do know is that bribes still exist. They are mm -hmm. still being given. And what I what I love <laughs> about this incredibly horrible idea is that patients still want to give bribes when they go in private practices. <laughs> which yeah. which 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 I find, you know, hilarious. I mean, isn't that like the whole point of you going to a private practice? You are already paying for the service. And also, yes, also in private practice, some doctors and nurses also still actually accept the money. Mm -hmm. But of course, there are, there are a lot of people that say no. And um, I think that that is a, a, a mixture of payment salaries actually being, you know, you, 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 you genuinely have a good living wage now if, if you are a doctor, which it didn't always used to be like that right no no i mean it it's probably hard to imagine for some people but uh, no you couldn't at least as a young doctor you didn't have enough money to genuinely you know pay rent and buy food <laughs> 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 so yeah uh, so that that was definitely an issue even as a resident now you have a generous uh, salary let's say mm -hmm. which uh, used to be not at all it used to be less than what the person who was cleaning the toilets in the hospital had not everybody who was accepting bribes was doing it out because they were a horrible person a lot of them were doing it genuinely because they didn't have enough money and i think mm -hmm. i think this was always a 
kind of you could tell because there were people who would just accept the money that they were given and then there were always the people who asked for money and did not mm-hmm. did not offer a service mm-hmm. and uh, i think that, that 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 is a big difference because uh, it, it is your job. You you decided to be a doctor. Even back then, you knew the salary, you knew the, the terms and conditions, uh, let's say. <laughs> so uh, you couldn't come and be like, but I, I, I want to somehow punish the patient, you know, obviously, that's, mm-hmm. that's not that's not the way to do it. But even today, I have uh, I have a friend uh, in Bucharest, not not in Cluj, where, where I where I live and work, who told me about this doctor that everybody refers to him as a jukebox doctor. Jukebox? Yes, yes, because he doesn't talk unless you put a coin in him. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So definitely there are doctors who no longer accept money because they genuinely don't need to anymore. And there are doctors who also have an ethical stance on this. Mm -hmm. And there are still doctors who some of them just accept without asking, even if they don't need to anymore. And there are still doctors who actually uh, will not offer you their medical services unless you realize what wh- why they are not speaking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. On the topic of politics mm-hmm. yet again, uh, right? Because corruption and clamping down on corruption is a big talking point mm-hmm. in our public sphere. Uh, do you feel like there has been some pressure coming from that direction also? in hospitals or do you think it's mostly because of the material conditions improving for many people and now they can actually mm. honestly i think uh, it's it's a lot more a uh, change of mentality and the change in salary than it is necessarily the clamp down mm. from the government because there were specific doctors that were targeted but mm-hmm. um I mean, the, the, the doctors that, that have been targeted, everybody knew the, the fact that they, they took bribes. But I am mm-hmm. sure that every single time this happened, this didn't happen because somehow the government had this program of monitoring the activity and clamping down. I think that these particular people fucked up with the wrong person, you know, Mm -hmm. because it it wasn't like it was about somebody uh, where it was a surprise, like everybody knew about them for decades. And we're not just just talking mm-hmm. about small bribes. We're talking here about you know like parallel systems of um, organ donor transplants. <laughs> so yeah, big, the big stuff, the big leagues. We're not talking about like receiving uh, coffee or something. We're we're talking huge mm-hmm. amounts of money, and everybody knew, and they didn't knew from like two days ago. So when mm-hmm. it happened, I'm sure it happened because they also pissed off the wrong ro- the wrong person, you know. Mm-hmm. And also there has been. Uh, uh, one um, let's say big operation that I know of maybe there were more but this is the one I know when it was this concentrated effort of somehow figuring the bribery system within the oncology system but that particular operation was started by something that was extremely stupid and it was done in an extremely non-productive way because mm-hmm. it it happened like the same day in many cities in Romania where, uh, you know, like the SWAT teams oh. have been, yeah, mm. they, they, the SWAT teams have been sent to the hospitals and the private, uh, you know, locations of the doctors. What, what you mean sending the SWAT teams to your house? Yes. But like yes. on what grounds? Of bribery. <laughs> Yeah, but did they have like a case, like an ongoing case? Did they have a warrant? Did they have like? Yes, yes, they had a, they had they had a case and they had warrants, okay. of course. But I mean, <laughs> it was, it was just because stu- I had to ask. You know, you never know. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, there was like this 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 big thing, and the it, the searches were legal, but were stupid mm-hmm. because if you don't if you don't orchestrate, if you don't send somebody to give bribes with some sort of marked uh, bills or mm-hmm. the fact that I have money in my house, it is not a sign of bribery and mm-hmm. you cannot prove anything and it was extremely idiotic because they sent SWAT teams you know uh, to a lot of doctors and they seized all the money they had in their house okay yeah like that's completely stupid like I I have money I am a doctor I mean mm-hmm. it's normal that I have money and if I want to have cash in my house that's okay yeah and, and it also, one of the worst moments was that they, they went to the house of one uh, lady doctor 
and her husband was dying and she had the money for like the funeral and stuff and they took her money <laughs> like that was oh. horrible Ho horrible but you know why send people with like guns and shit nobody was going to get murdered by the doctors that oh take we bribes. know we know you doctors <laughs> we know you train hard and work hard in the gym in order to beat up everyone who would you know take away your bribes we know how you roll. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And also they, they went to hospitals. You, you, know, you yourself like... are a muscle woman. You know, oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, people, people should be very afraid of me. No. Um, and they, also they went to the hospitals and also, you know, like in full SWAT gear and with guns and everything. Like, why? Uh, yeah, <laughs> why? The, the, and, the stupid machismo. Of yes. And, and the wonderful thing that came out of this is that the SWAT team, uh, when I think it was in Bistritza, but I'm, I'm not sure. I don't I don't remember for sure the hospital. But like five in the morning, SWAT teams arrive. Nobody even had their coffee. Yes. Uh, and the, the doorman sees the SWAT team and it's like, well, if you the SWAT team want to, you know, like come in the hospital, they have to put on... Pro oh, the protective little boots. <laughs> and there are pictures of these guys in like SWAT uh, equipment, you know, with like oh guns and God. everything. And, and their, their face is covered and everything. And the, and the little plastic blue <laughs> things <laughs> on their huge boots. <laughs> Everything in order to keep a sanitary environment. Yes, because the dormant was the, the doorman was like, you cannot descend upon the hospital oh, without the protective. Bless. I mean, <laughs> bless him. Yeah, I mean he was yeah. he was following protocol. Bless. I mean that 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 thing didn't amount to anything because because it was stupid. They took um, the computers and the phones, but clearly they didn't have a, a real lead. They didn't know what they were looking for. And um, did anyone get convicted? No, because oh, uh, the the thing the thing from which all of this started was um, they had this information about doctors going to conferences, but like you know, going to conferences in like the Seychelles or something. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, about conferences that were in uh, popular tourist uh, places and uh, that were sort of a bribe from the pharma companies. But mm -hmm. um, those, uh, those things, well, those happened. Th those were true. But they happened mm -hmm. before they were illegal. That's the best time for them. So <laughs> Yes, yes, because, because um, for, for a long time there wasn't any specific legislation about this. And they only happened when there wasn't any sort of legislation. So it doesn't matter what you, um, you know, in mm -hmm. an ethical standpoint to have your opinion about this. If you don't have any law against yeah. it. The law does not uh, get applied retroactively, right? Abs ab yeah. absolu absolutely not. And also it was very unfairly portrayed because uh, people kept saying that uh, these conferences were so that doctors would prescribe more costly medication. Which was not mm -hmm. true because these conferences were uh, generally paid by the generic companies, so by the cheaper <laughs> drugs. Interesting. Yes, because generally the original companies, you know, the the, the companies for original uh, medication, they have a lot more money, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. so, and 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 they genuinely paid for doctors to go to this. Uh, real, uh, very important uh, conferences in the world, like ASCO and ESMO and things like that. These uh, made-up uh, conferences were from the generic companies. So, so like, everything was poorly planned, poorly understood. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I think, I, I think it's fine. Nobody's listening anyway. <clears throat> at that time, uh, <laughs> at, at that time, uh, this lady that uh, worked for CRI, you know, in Romania. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, the intelligence services. Yeah, try to recruit recruit my husband <laughs> oh yeah and it was uh, a little time before this whole operation and uh, my husband did talk to her um, sure if you want to ask me you can ask me you don't need to play this recruitment game i'm, I'm mm -hmm. not going to be like but if there is an honestly something that uh, it's for a real ethical purpose i will answer you know mm -hmm. and most of the issues is that they were listening in <clears throat> to conversations, you know, over the phone, mm -hmm. but it, mostly they did not understand what, <laughs> if, if, if the if conversation was bad or not, because the, there was a lot of medical talk and things that they genuinely didn't understand. You would expect them to have at least someone who is trained for that. Yeah, no, they did not. Considering all the funding they get from uh, the national budget, you would expect them to, nevertheless. Maybe you would expect them to. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm an optimist, what can I say? So, so most definitely, whatever change happened, it did not happen because of the wonderfully choreographed takedown on bribery. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's change tack for a moment. Do you have some time to talk about our Lord and Savior, the invisible hand of, of the free and also efficient market? <laughs> <clears throat> Because I know you like to talk about, uh, you know, how uh, great uh, the private sector is at uh, maximizing efficiency and uh, cost cutting. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I'm not an economist. I, I, I will not discuss any sort of economic whatever principles. But what I say is that if you have a shitty person managing something, just because that shitty person moves from the you know public sphere to the private sphere, they will still be a shitty person. And uh, despite what uh, what uh, some people think, in Romania there are, at least in the medical sector, a few guys that are the bosses of a lot of the things that go on medically wise. Let's say you you mean like in the mafia sense, the bosses? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not in, not in the mafia sense. But I mean the the person who is the the boss of one of the um, laboratories, you know, the, where they do blood analysis, if, uh, that is a public laboratory, is also the boss of the private laboratory. Oh. <laughs> you know, oh. so, and that happens time and again, mm -hmm. because the people who were uh, in charge in the public sphere were the people who had the most resources, the you know, money-wise, but also mm -hmm. connection, knowing people-wise. So they, they were the ones that managed to ha have their, like, private businesses. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, in, in Romania, even though we have as a concept this idea of conflict of interest, uh, it is pretty poorly defined. And uh, this, this kind of things, when you are the, the boss in the public sphere and the boss in the private sphere, it's not considered a conflict of interest. Even though, clearly, if, if I am the boss in, in one business and I hire the same people also in my private business, of course, I will use them and I will, I will make them not spend uh, as much time in their public job as in their private job where they work also directly for me, <laughs> but mm -hmm. they're also bringing me a profit. And, yeah. when you, and, and I actually had conversations with people um, in the town here and they were like, yeah, you know, it's this really bad thing because I went to the public laboratory and they told me, that it will take four weeks to have this analysis. And they told me to go to this other laboratory, you know, the private one. And the private one told me that it will take one week or five days. And I was like, but did you realize that the guy that sent you there is the guy who does both those analyses? And it's, mm -hmm. in, his, it's in his interest to say that it takes a lot of time in one place and, uh, you know, not as much on the other. So one, one of the problems before going into any sort of lefty versus libertarian type of uh, discussion conversation we have to fix this sort of very basic things i dislike using left and right because what we have is grifters grifters on every side uh, yeah and people are rarely consistent anyhow so of, of, of course mm -hmm. but 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 every time we have somebody in the government discussing how we should make everything private because blah 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 looks like what happens okay can we can you can we first fix these issues and then see if it's not more efficient for us to have a public and a private sphere and that they are separate because this is the, this is the most uh, destructive part of everything right now. Mm -hmm. The fact, the fact that um, um, you can be the boss in both places. Because I understand a lot of people say that you cannot limit a, a person's right to, to to a job. You know, if they mm -hmm. work, if they work in the public sphere and the private sphere. And I'm not saying limit the the jobs for the employee. I'm I'm saying limit the the opportunity to be a boss. If you own a business in the private sphere, you cannot also be in charge. You cannot also be a manager in the public sphere. Can you give me like a more sort of concrete example? Because what I can imagine now, uh, when we discuss this conflict of interest uh, with people being, uh, as you say, in management positions or in mm -hmm. positions of power in both uh, public and uh, 
private healthcare. I, I just imagine, you know, the doctor telling you, as you said, uh, directing you to his private practice, right? Mm-hmm. Funneling you to towards that because obviously you will pay a lot of money and uh, mm-hmm. that's a business, a short business for them. But like what, because you, because you made a distinction between like the employee and the manager. So like what else can you do in that position? A, a lot. It's the way that um, some some hospitals have been ruined because in, in, in Romania and I think everywhere in the world, I'm not sure, but um, we, we have this system. They, they, they also have it in Germany, in Australia. Uh, mm-hmm called the DRG, where um, different, um, let's say, medical procedures have certain costs attached to them. Mm-hmm. And, and and some of them, they take a lot of resources, but they're not necessarily very well reimbursed. And others, they don't take so much resources, but they are very well reimbursed. And what a lot of uh, the problem... When you say resources, you mean like money that money. is from the state budget or... It doesn't matter from where it is. Some mm-hmm. some some procedures, because they will, they, they will take a long time, it will mean that you will spend a lot of money on the mm-hmm. people that have to do those, on the fact that you you have a, a bed that is occupied and you cannot do anything. It can eat your money in very different ways, not necessarily because you have to pay for something, but uh, if something makes somebody stay in your hospital bed for many days, even mm-hmm. if you even if you don't have to, the, the thing that you do to the person doesn't cost a lot, but the, the, the bed see. is occupied and you cannot do something else that would bring you a lot more money, you know, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. While, okay. While, okay. While, that, while that bed is occupied. So a lot of the problems problem with private pr- public uh, thing is that a, a doctor will will um, will operate a, a patient in in his private hospital so the, the operation in itself i don't know heart surgery whatever mm-hmm. it will, and uh, obviously the patient pays there uh, or uh, the um, the patient or the insurance because some of them are insured through you know the national insurance and uh, they, they, they 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 do the operation so it doesn't matter the insurance or the person directly pays and it pays a lot mm-hmm. but but, but then the person needs to stay in the hospital under observation. So the person will occupy a bed. But without necessarily, you, you don't do much to the patient. So you, you don't get reimbursed as much. So after you operate the, the patient, you send the patient to the public hospital and you occupy a bed there and they get no okay. money. So you got mm-hmm. like thousands of thousands, you know, of, of, of like 30 to 20, 30 thousand dollars, euros. And then you send it to the public uh, hospital and it stays there for like a week and it occupies a bed and they get like, you know, $10. So this is the typical example of like privatizing uh, profits and socializing costs. So another example is that of um, giving birth. You know, there is this whole industry that offered services um, that were strictly about giving birth or about C-sections. Mm-hmm. In, in Romania for, for, for a long time and even, even now mostly, the services in private practice were strictly for giving birth. If you actually had, like if everything about your uh, pregnancy and delivery of the baby was perfectly normal mm-hmm. uh, or a C-section if you had like no complications whatsoever. So obviously the the women that opted to have their their child in a um, private hospital they they were swayed by the fact that everything looked cleaner, nicer, mm-hmm. you know. But a lot of them didn't realize that if anything happened to them or their baby, the services of the, offered in that hospital was let's call 112, which mm. is the Romanian version of 911. So any sort of um, deviation for the norm they couldn't handle and they would have called actually the emergency and they would have sent that woman or her baby to a public hospital that actually had the services to... And was that strictly because they couldn't uh, actually handle any other services related to that? Or as you said, because they didn't want to handle the costs as well associated? Well, both, because the reason they didn't have the services were because they didn't want the costs. Ah, okay, I see. Hmm. Because in order to have the services, you had to have the, the doctors paid, you know, the neonatologist, the emergency doctor, the like, I see. you know, all those things, you mm-hmm. had to have them. And the reason they didn't have those things was because they pay, you know, you 
they cost a lot, but they did not, uh, the, the return on investment was not the same. Oh, the scumminess of it all. Yes, yes. And this is why when, when you talk about human health and human life and you want to talk about it in terms of, you know, um, let's have competition and, mm. uh, you know, let's have uh, things be financially sexy. Yeah, to have financial gain from, from, from human health. All I have to say about this discourse is I hope you fuck off and die. <laughs> 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 from from the bottom of my heart and when with all my love fuck off and die because it's one thing to discuss the many many issues mm -hmm. that there are in the in the in the uh, health system in Romania mm -hmm. it's also another to to discuss the fact that it is very good to have a good private health system but that arises from its own ability to exist mm -hmm and not from grifting. So for instance, you mean that in, in a situation where, well, probably because of uh, usually political decisions, you don't have uh, enough capacity for certain very specific procedures and services in the uh, uh, public yeah. sector, you could supplement the need uh, for that yes. with uh, the private sector. But that, this again is a political decision, whether or not you want to allocate the resources towards expanding. And, and, and also, no, because I think Sometimes if, 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 if we talk about, you know, being financially feasible, mm -hmm. um, if, if somebody is a, a genuine, genuine actor on the, you know, health system scene, because a lot of the times it's like, you know, random Joe being like, I want to get in on this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's not, it's not exactly something you decide to do overnight. Mm -hmm. but, if, but if we're talking about genuine actors that, actually know what they're doing. I can give you the, the, the exa example of radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. To buy um, this, uh, the, the radiotherapy machines, mm -hmm. they are very expensive. So I think it's absolutely fine if, uh, if, 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 if people who are in this business and actually know what they're doing, if, if, if they want to, to build a hospital and then to have a contract for the services and the services to be paid from the public insurance. I mean, that's, it, it's very good because you didn't put the, the public money into building everything mm -hmm. and buying the very expensive uh, tools. Uh, but if, um, you know, those, those hospitals and clinics, they, they need to be approved according to, you know, obviously, mm -hmm. the national standard. And so everything is on the up and up and they don't send people somewhere else and they don't, you know, like you can ask for them, you know, we want you to be able to do this and this and that. If, if you put the right terms in place first, mm -hmm. This can be a very beneficial way of, of, of doing things, mm -hmm. but but it has to be very clear what are the boundaries, you know, within which the private uh, actor comes and plays. And it's it, it's beneficial for the private sector that, I mean, they need to know, like, this is what I need to do. I need, so myself as a, as a private actor, I will, I will, I will tell you if, okay, this is, this is uh, good for me or, you know, nobody will ever come and do any kind of business because you didn't whatever do right and then we can have a different conversation about um, expanding those boundaries but what happens generally is that in Romania people only want to do business in certain cities and that is why you have like three places where you can do good medicine mm -hmm. um, and uh, as I said everything is badly de designed because of course you can have a a, a, a private um, blood analysis laboratory. Great. Be be the boss there. Do the best business you can do. But you cannot also be the boss in the public lab, you know, and get your people from there and get your um, stuff, whatever, actually, mm -hmm. even, you know, like... Um, genuinely stealing things from taking to your own lab like they, there need to be boundaries and every time this discussion is held um, is, uh, is, is held you know in, in, in the public sphere in Romania it's these uh, grifters the politician grifters that are generally somewhat leaning right um, saying that well there is nothing we can do to improve this there is nothing mm. we can do the only thing we can do is just hand over take it away from us <laughs> take it away from us exactly exactly this is the only way the conversation is in at any point being had mm -hmm. and 
it, it it's also annoying because a lot of the time even the the people on the they they probably they would be defined as on the left they sort of feel that the conversation is bad but they don't know enough about the conversation and everything they have to add is like no the private sector is always horrible mm -hmm. and bad and and like the conversation is like this you know everything should be private because then the financial gains will be wonderful and what we want from you know about human health what we want is competition and money not actually you know the health yeah. and <laughs> either that or, or or the other part which is like no the private sector will always want to just be grifters and you know never offer us anything good and i'm like <laughs> why why yeah. why is this why is why why does this have to be uh, but i obviously the, the reason why this needs to be held like this is because things uh, it's, it's generally... this way things don't change don't basically change, exactly. so it, it favors yes. the status quo because yeah yes yes yeah I, I i see your dog is getting very restless now that we were discussing conflict uh, of interest and stuff like that he was uh, just like shuffling around in the background yes yes <laughs> So as a closing thought, uh, I wanted to ask whether or not, I mean, we both agree that when it comes to solutions, uh, one person cannot come up with the right plan, right? But obviously, this is a, a very serious podcast, right? <laughs> it, a absolutely. In which we I'm a very, very serious person. Yes, in which we clearly define the scope and limitations of our discussion. <laughs> Uh, so I'm just uh, asking for your personal opinion about what in, uh, in your mind could be done to create a better version of our current healthcare system. So you've mentioned, you know, uh, resolving the issue of conflict of interest. I think this is quite important on yeah. your list. Is there anything else? Well, it, it is a, a, an honest conversation, which, uh, in my opinion, can never happen about the real limits of what the public sector can offer. Mm -hmm. And uh, an honest conversation about what actually, um, you know, what are the, um, the real um, services and, you know, what, whatever health related things that really have to be covered. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot start the conversation from everything is important and you have to give me everything. Okay. Because, yeah, like, no. but no politician will ever, ever take up this uh, conversation. No politician will be in the in the position of saying, you deserve your disease, your um, situation deserves more money and more attention than the other. Uh, because a lot of people in this country uh, complain, you know, because a lot of people in this country either are, you know, co complain about this in... Um, in bad faith or because genuinely they did not spend one you know second of their time to actually think things through because a lot of people complain but i i'm paying for my health insurance and you know i have never even been sick and i'm like yeah that's not how it works yeah, <laughs> yeah say, say say thank you and move along yeah and and also there are people are like uh, but I'm paying health insurance and there was this one time when I needed, um, you know, Tylenol is you know, paracetamol in, in Romania. Uh, and, uh, you know, paracetamol is not on the list of free medicine. So I did not get my free paracetamol that actually costs free lay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so, so there should be a certain amount of things that they, if, they, if they don't amount to an actual, you know, sum of money that poses a problem they should not be covered because you give three lay and three lay and three lay and you end up giving a lot of money for you know no use actual use mm -hmm. uh that's one thing and 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 it happens with uh, with uh, with a lot of things you know like like this also um there should be we, we should have you know the, the the regulatory body uh should 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 really only put on the insurance list the medication that actually works and makes sense but this is a problem in almost all countries mm -hmm. because you always have like this new shining shiny new drug and the, the the pharma companies market it market that drug like let's say cancer you know where everybody's very 
they hear cancer and everybody's like, yeah, this is something serious. And obviously it is. So a drug that uh, offers a bigger survival rate than the former drug, it's like, we really, we have to have this. But there are genuinely drugs that have been approved based on the fact that they have a bigger median survival of 10 days. Mm. But yeah. the amount of money they cost, you know, against their competitor that maybe already has a generic is, mm-hmm. is, is huge. I'm guessing so, there's a lot, fair amount of lobbying going on with these things, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And and, and this is this is very, very difficult because uh, pharma companies lobby a lot of patient associations Mm -hmm. and they make the patients lobby the government, Mm. you know, because it looks shit (laughs) if they do it. But if but if you convince the patients that are desperate, that look, there are there are new drugs in the world and you are not getting them. And, and they end up on television and whatever, you know, discussions. And they're like, oh, look, there are these new drugs that they are using in America or United Kingdom or whatever. And they, you don't give them to us. And I could live longer. Yeah, a median. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not bullshitting with this. There are, there are drugs that have a, had a median survival <laughs> uh, rate, you know, increase of 10 days. You, you can get something like that for, for, for a drug that actually has no actual benefit just by the sheer amount of people you put into the uh, trial, you know? Things are very complicated and there are many, many layers mm-hmm. to this. So one, the basic that, that you need is something that it's, I think, the, the hardest to have. Mm-hmm. An honest conversation among people that actually know what they're doing and they, are, they, 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 they want to have this conversation in good faith. Mm-hmm. Because, of course... All of us might have not the best ideas in some directions, but if, if, if our contribution is to the best of our knowledge and to the, to the best of our desire for actual common good, mm-hmm. of course, we will, we will still get it wrong. But in time, it will improve. But none of the conversations are, are, are based on this. You're such a dreamer. <laughs> And one of the problems that I have no idea how to fix, because I'm one of those people that when hears the slogan of education, fix it, everything, I want to punch somebody in the face. (laughs) Uh, I I, I have no idea what education fixes everything means, like zero idea. I have no clue how how you get a certain amount of of ideas and of understanding uh, within the general public, because... A lot of these bad faith ideas are being propagated by grifters Mm -hmm. and are being maintained and sustained and in the end implemented because of the people who don't understand that they are actually the victims of these grifters. Mm -hmm. Also, it is very, very important to be a realist Mm -hmm. because if what you want is the ideal version of everything and everything less is bad and only the one who promises you the ideal version is the one you will put your faith in. Mm-hmm. You will always lose. Always. Mm-hmm. You, are being, you are being lied to every time somebody offers you the ideal solution. And if you are not in the position of wanting to understand a little what actually cannot be offered to you and to, to appreciate somebody who actually says something true, but also not in a doomer way. Like, there is nothing we can do. Let's just Mm -hmm. give up on everything, you know? Because that is also not a realistic solution. There is nothing we can do. That that person is not a realist also. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lazy fucking coward that wants to make money off of not doing any work. Exactly. Also, there is is this problem of the reaction. Like, you, you have a solution that is in genuinely, you genuinely believe in it. You did, like, the groundwork to, mm-hmm. to, to think for, of, of everything. And you implement it. And, you know, five years down the line, you realize there are some things you couldn't have think, thought about. And for, for those reasons, this idea doesn't work. And it's, it's absolutely fine to, to accept that these sort of mistakes can exist without, a, you know, somebody to blame uh, in the sense, you know, of like, oh, you are a horrible person. Mm-hmm. Also, it's very important to to actually look at the, these mistakes and separate these this kind of things, like the kind of things that were genuinely done in bad faith. And you can see, like, everybody saw that this was a train wreck and they did it anyway. So, like, those people need to be held accountable. And the, the, the people who tried something, well, maybe it wasn't so good, but it wasn't in bad faith. It was something that genuinely seemed logical and it mm-hmm. wasn't you you have to separate these these people but uh, uh, again it's it, it's very hard and 
We don't even need to go into that much nuance because at the time we only have grifters, so <laughs> they're all shit. Yeah, I, 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 I'm speaking specifically at the people in the Ministry of Health right now, mm -hmm. and and also about our current minist Minister of Health. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely chap, lovely chap. Yeah, yeah. Should we wrap it up? Absolutely. <laughs> Everything is great. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And if you are not yet asleep, because I know this can be sometimes a technical conversation, although we try to keep it uh, among friends, you know, click follow and share and do the whatever. The, the, the things that people do on the social media when they like something. <laughs> you know, you know, I only realized yesterday that I can vote on Spotify for the podcasts that I'm listening to. I can give them stars. I only realized this yesterday. It's never too late. <laughs> so, yes, people, you can do this. <laughs> Okay. And, and, it, and it helps the podcast. Yes, apparently. yes, apparently it helps. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Bye. Have a, bye, bye.